Close your eyes. Watch your breath coming in and going out. Take a couple of good long, deep in and up breaths and notice where you feel the breathing process. That feeling with the energy moving, that's what we mean when we talk about breath. And notice if it's comfortable. If it's not comfortable, you can change. Ask yourself what kind of breathing would feel best for the body right now. Longer, shorter, deeper, shallower, heavier, lighter, faster, slower. What does the body need right now? If it's feeling tired, you want to breathe in a way that's more energizing. If you're feeling wired, you want to breathe in a way that's more relaxing, calming. Try to get in touch with what the body needs right now. And you'll also be getting in touch with what the mind needs right now. The mind is something we have to look after. We don't just accept whatever mood comes its way. If you find that's in a mood that's going to lead in the wrong direction, we've got to get it out. The Buddha says you have to be mindful like a man whose head is on fire. He doesn't just sit there and watch the flames. He tries to put them out as quickly as he can. Now, sometimes this will require patience, though, as you figure out what exactly is wrong. But the basic principle is that you can be responsible for the state of your mind. It doesn't have to depend on things outside. It doesn't have to depend on the state of your body. It can depend totally on what you want it to do. This is part of the training. Is learning what you want the mind to do and then how to do it in a way that's effective. Sometimes you have to be quick, sometimes, you, as I said, you have to be more patient. But remember that whatever the state of mind you're in, you don't have to stay there if it's unskillful. In other words, if it's going to lead you to do things that are not in your own best interest or in the interest of other people. And it'll lead you to do things that are harmful for either for yourself or for others, you want to get out of that mood. As for moods that are good, you want to maintain them. So we're not just watching things arising and passing away. If they're good things, we want to make them arise and keep them from passing away. If they're unskillful qualities of the mind, we want to prevent them from arising and hurry up their passing away if they're there. This all comes under the principle of what the Buddha calls right effort. It's a kind of acceptance, but it's an acceptance of responsibility. You can be responsible for your state of mind. And if you've been managing it unskillfully in the past, well, you can learn how to be more skillful. You don't have to stay stuck where you are. That's the basic message. After all, this is a teaching all about how to put an end to suffering, about the things you can do to put an end to suffering. So learn how to observe the mind, learn how to observe the body. Keep them together. And then from observing, you'll learn how to put them in good shape. For the body, that's through the way you breathe. Through the mind, it begins with the way you breathe, and then moves on to the way you handle other things that come up in the mind outside of your focus on the breath. But it all starts right here, at the spot where the body and the mind meet, right here at the breath coming in going out. It's through the breath that the mind can make the body move, and it's through the breath that the mind can know about the body. So stay right here, and you'll learn a lot about both sides.